to tying the springs completely, just tying the springs. Because we get a lot of questions. It's probably the most questions we get about spring tying. So I'm, I'm going to tell you a question that somebody had asked while I'm while I'm tying the springs. So let's get started. Okay. The first thing we're going to do is place two 14 ounce tacks at each row of springs. Okay. So for the sake of argument, one spring this way is a row of springs. Let's just let's just say. So we're going to start from the back to the front. Now, when you when you place these in, you're only going to put them in about halfway, okay? And what I want to do is, you want to angle these tacks. So you're going to put two tacks, about an inch, an inch and a half, and you're going to angle the back tacks because you have this rail in the back. So you want to angle the tacks at about a 10 or 15 degree angle because you have to you have to drive these tacks all the way in. If you stop them with str uh, straight up, you're not going to be able to drive them in, okay? Notice how I'm using my magnetic end to just kind of put these in, and then I'm turning my hammer to the hammer side of the hammer just to get them in the way I want them. And I, I, like I said, I want to be about, you know, maybe uh, depending on the wood, uh, this is a softer wood, so I'm going in about two thirds of the way. So I've got my back set, now I'm coming to the side. Okay, and I'm going to look at this now, the, the rows are kind of on the sides, kind of hard to see. But um, I'm going to go one, one spring right here. I'm going to say that's a row right there. And then we're going to go up to the middle here. We're going to get three springs on that. So we got that. Notice I'm still a little bit of an angle because you have this post here. If you were straight up on those tacks and it's time to tack them all the way in, it's likely that you're going to hit that. So beware of that. Okay, now we got this. So we're going to go off to the side just a little bit. Actually, you know what we're going to do? We're going to put a tack here on the side because you notice how the row of the spring was right at the arm. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a tack around the block, two tacks, one tack here, one tack here, and then we're going to put a bridge from here to here and then tie from the bridge over. And you'll see that in a minute. Okay, let's keep continuing on. I'm going to put two tacks here and two tacks here. Here. Use our magnetic hammer to grab that one. One hand for our bridge. One hand. And we need two here. tacks. Now we're all ready to do our spring tying and we're all walk, working from the back rail to the front. What I'm going to do is go over this and measure. I'm going to go over this row of springs to here and I'm going to go one and I'm going to go two and a half. Okay? I need two and a half times. I might as well cut all the twines. So I need one, two, just to begin. One, two, three, four, five, six. So let's just cut them all now. This is not a perfect science. There's no, there's no real strong formula to this in, in, uh, until just remember, unless you just remember the two and a half times. That's the best thing to remember. One, two, three, four, five. It, it doesn't have to be exact, but you want to make sure you have enough, right? It's always good to have too much on this. Now on wire edge seats, that's a different thing. We might, maybe we'll show you a wire edge seat sometime. I'm not sure if we ever showed you that, but that's a, that's a different way of tying a, of a spring system. So let's just cut all these. And let's just start one. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to measure out. You don't have to actually tape measure this. If you could just get 14, 15, 16 inches. Uh, in, in mind. If you want to measure it, you can, but that's that's about it. So notice there's a little bit, you don't have to be perfect on this. So it's about 14, 16 inches, somewhere around there. So what you want to do is you want to run these parallel, like so. So you have a long twine and a short twine. And what you're going to do is just make like, just loop, like glasses, like glasses. <coughs> See me do that before, like this. And we're going to loop up around the back. You want to make sure you have your hammer at the ready. Okay. Pull these towards this way and get these set. Pull the two 
twines towards the five inch septum. Now you've got two twines working this way towards the front of the chair, but we're only going to do the small, uh, the big twine first. So people usually have a lot of questions about the size of springs and about where to start with the twine. It's a good question. It's all about leverage. So when you have a tall spring like this, you really have to start at the third rung from the top. So we're gonna start the third rung from the top. If it was a smaller spring, you'd be at the second one. If it was an even smaller spring, you'd be up at the top rung. It's all about leverage. The thing is, if you were here, the spring would distort to start with. You don't want that. Okay, it will, it will start to crown, but not right now. That's not what our purpose is right now. Our purpose now is to get these tied tight individually and act individual springs up, um, you'll see. I'm gonna tie this. Now, somebody had a question about that knot, okay? Any knot will do. It's the twine that's important, okay? So I'm gonna show you a different type of knot. As a matter of fact, I think on this one, for our beginners out there, I'm gonna do a crossover knot, which is a lot easier to learn. And I, it, it's, it's okay to do it on the jute twine. Uh, you're not cheating yourself. Don't do it on the nylon twine though. Okay, the jute twine really does hold. I've seen, I've seen these knots after many, many, many years, like 80, 100 years, and they're still holding. So it's simply a loop here, and I'm gonna cross over. That's a crossover. And I'm, I'm gonna slow this down. You can do that at home too, but watch this. Okay, so now, the, here, here's the thing with this, okay? You just can't tie this and, and pull it towards the front. Eventually, you're gonna have to pull them all and get it tacked up here. Okay, what you need to do is gauge where this knot goes. So what I tell you to do is put the, put the tension on. First of all, get your loop in here like this. Pull, and that spring's crooked, okay? And then draw the spring back till it's straight up with the tension. That's very important. See how close these are? And that's just a crossover. Look at that. Now I'm gonna slow it down here. Notice how I'm at the third rung from the top. Top, 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 top. And we're gonna finish at the third rung. All about leverages leveraging. Okay, so now we're going to take this and just cross over. So now I'm going to do my crossover. I'm going, to, I'm going to check the spring. I'm going to draw it back and I'm going to get my ugly nail in here. People say, oh, what's wrong with this thumb? Well, if you're an upholsterer, please, if you're a hand model and you want to be an upholsterer, give it up because I gave up my hand mo modeling career years ago. I was, me and the palm olive lady would, would sit together and she would soak my beautiful hands. Believe me, I had beautiful hands. No, not so. So if people want to know, I might as well tell you what happened to me is I hammered my thumb and I actually killed the root underneath my fingernail and that's why I'm left with this. It's, it, hey, there's a lot worse things that could happen, right folks? But we love our trade. So, so I'd say all you ladies out there who are worried about their nails, you might want to pick another career. <laughs> Anyhow, so now I'm going to leave that for now. Okay, that's one row tied. We'll go, go, okay, about 18 inches, 16, 18 inches, okay? And then we're going to fold this over like so with the little loops. We're going to loop the back. So pull this tight and get that. Third rung. And our crossover is a little easier to learn. It's a little easier to make than the, than the knot itself. And like I said, I think it's effective as long as you're using the jute twine. Okay, it's just simply a crossover. See that? I'm gonna slow it down. Come looping under, like so. See? And we're gonna adjust the spring, and then we're just gonna cross over. Two, three, this is three. And cross over. Look at notice how when I'm pulling this, I'm using my index finger, my two fingers on this hand, my left hand, because I'm a righty. And then what I'm gonna do is dress up the tacks like so. Look, see that? And then we need to hammer that in. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay. 
loop those over. Pull. Third run. Notice how when I pull that spring forward, it's crooked. It's better, it's easier to draw it back like so than it is twine. Come up to the top run. We transition to the top run after along the edges it's the third run, and then everywhere else it's the top run. So here we go. We're gonna check that out, adjust to the back, do a crossover. Come down to the third run. Quickly do that. Now watch. I pull it, pull with, get all the tension. All the springs are standing straight up. And then I dress up the tacks. I'm sure you always have your hammer ready. <laughs> Okay, now let's start the sides. I'm a right-handed person, so it's easy for me to start from the right to the left. So what I do is, you know what, I think on this side I'm gonna dress up the twines all on this side first, instead of doing one individual. Let's do this one. And I wanna show you the bridge that we develop. That's one, one row. Second row. Put that over there for now. I'm going to cut about a 12 inch piece of twine now. Now, the reason we had to do this is you don't want to be tacking into these blocks that are holding the arm. Um, these are not uh, these are not what they appear to be. They're not structural. They're actually not holding the arm They're actually coming up to the height of the upholstery So they're only meant for the upholstery nothing else if you put anything else in there it will break So what I'm going to do is wrap around one side here At least one complete revolution I'm going to Set that Come over here loosely. I'm doing this loosely so look, look, that's how loose I am. I want to make sure I can get a twine over there. What I mean by loosely, not around the head of the tack, but around in this area. Okay, I'm gonna tack that. Now I'm gonna get my bridge on the other side too. Cut kind of about 12 inches. So this is a little unusual, uh, you know, shape that we're, we're tying springs around a seat that uh, these Victorian chairs don't always, you know, you can't always have a square piece of furniture. You now we've shown you other videos with square, square furniture or rectangle furniture and the springs are all uniformed and you know, sometimes you have to get a little creative and this is one of them, this bridge. Yeah, I don't want to be tacking into this, that's why, that's the whole idea, this whole bridge here. Okay, let me make sure that this one's tacked in. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to go from this one. So our back spring, now this is interesting, I want you to look at this. So this is the, this is the row in the back, one spring. But notice the angle of the twine changes because it's further away from the rail. So now we can go up to the top on this one because it's so far away. The angles are actually the same. It's the same angle as, the, as, as along the edges. Does that make sense to you? So look, because you could tie this and this doesn't distort. That's how you know. So we'll do the crossover. I'm doing all of this seat on a crossover uh, method um, to make it a little easier for you beginners out there. Okay, look at that. Okay, and now I'm going to give this a pull. Try to pull this stuff. Pull. Not pulling down, we're pulling this way, by the way. Everyone thinks you're, you're compressing the spring. You're really not. 
The compression of the spring is the size of the spring. That's what determines compression. Now we're getting them in place is what we're doing here. Okay, so now I'm gonna get a couple more of the twines here. It's already set. Okay, so this one's gonna get the three tied in the middle. Okay, I'm gonna come up to the second rung because this is further away, a little further away from the reel. You see that? Okay, it's gonna, and you know, you're the artiste, as they say, so you guys decide as you go along, too, what's right. You know, the, you could go down to the third rung, I suppose, on that. You couldn't go up to the first rung, though, on that. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, we're gonna come to this one. See, as a teacher for over 30 years teaching upholstery, I have a lot of the questions in my head that people have asked over the years, so hopefully I'm getting all that out, but when we start our classes, we're hoping that the people, um, I think that's a great way for you all to learn when we have um, three or four people learning it, uh, on different projects at the same time in the class, asking all those questions that you have at home that you might not want to bother with me with online uh, because you have so many of them, but I think these, these classes will, will answer a lot of your questions. I'm kind of excited about that. Hopefully, by the way, you subscribe. Subscribing keeps me going. I get those subscribers. It really wants to make me do these videos again, as you know. So I thank you all who have subscribed and people who are watching these videos. All it takes is a click of a button. Greatly appreciated. Okay. Now, we're gonna do our bridge. Let me just, I'm gonna cut two and a half times. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna tie a knot. See, the reason that we needed, another reason we needed this bridge, we needed to avoid this post, but we need to get in the middle of the center of the, of the uh, spring row, okay? So that's important. So all I'm gonna do, I'm simply gonna just knot this, okay? Now, these ruby twine is great because it, it, one knot will do it. Okay, now I'm gonna come up to the third rung on this. Pretty interesting, isn't it? I find my work interesting. I like my work. Something that I couldn't show you on video because it was just such a huge project. I just finished an 1820 Victorian sofa that was, wow, that thing was in tough shape. I have time to do a complete video on that, but we do have it in Treasures of Upholstery if you want to look onto that, um, look onto that video. So we like doing you know, we like having fun, too, when we do these videos, and so not all of them are serious, right? We're doing an array of videos, but um, we are going to buckle down, though, with these classes and present. We want to present to the average person who's just starting this upholstery, um, uh, the hobbyist, um, you know, even a serious person who wants to be an upholster. We think that we have a very unique channel in that I was trained by European masters, and I, I think my tradition goes way back to the beginning. And I, I, I'm talking techniques. Um, so we're hoping that um, our, our, we have a popular channel, of course, and that you all will be patrons of that channel by subscribing. Say, so, so now I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna run this through here. Oh, sometimes having big hands is not an advantage. Okay, so I'm gonna tie that. And I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna tie these two together, watch this. I'm gonna, see, I'm starting to create my crown. This is the first one. I'll do, I'm gonna leave that like this. Now I'm gonna go around the whole chair and, and do the side and do the small twine to show you. The reason we, we have a small twine is that we're coming up here and we're grabbing these two rungs and underneath here and we're trying to get, what we're trying to do is create the crown of the seat. That's the first steps in creating the crown of the seats because there's a lot more going on. So I'm gonna go all the way around. Look, I have to go all the way around that, that knot right there. And I'm gonna try to squeeze all that together. It's impossible to actually squeeze them right next to one another, nor do you want to. But you do just make an attempt to squeeze them together and then you can get a double knot in that. Okay, and then we're gonna, let's just do that on all of them. Then we're gonna go back and do one other thing. So we can come over the top and we squeeze them together and we get a knot there. I'm gonna leave that for now, that knot, that end. Come around the top. You know, a special thanks to the cameraman 
Michael Patrick, who, uh, this is not easy for all of you who have tried to film yourself or, you know, it's hard standing there all this time and trying to get all these good shots. So a shout out to him. I know that this isn't easy. When we do our classes, we're gonna have two camera people. I say that because one's gonna be a girl and um, they're gonna be uh, focusing. I mean, we're gonna be learning a lot. You guys are gonna be learning a lot in that class coming up. So we, we quite honestly, we, we're waiting for the equipment. We're getting new equipment. The, you know, the, the quality is gonna be better of the, fil of the filming. And um, you're gonna get more shots and you're gonna get a lot of information in these shows, really. Uh, the, all the questions an apprentice would ask a master over, over the course of his apprenticeship, which could be three to five, three to six years. And even the journeyman who has questions um, will benefit from these, I think. Um, we're going to do every type of upholstering, reupholstering. We're not going to you know, get into you know, sewing up um, a lot. Um, our focus is going to be on the traditions of upholstery. So we will be doing some cushions, but we're not going to be doing slip covers, for instance. Things like that. It's not our focus. Going to try to take you into, you know, pretty much my experience as a, as an apprentice, trying to get you into the shop that I was in back in the '70s, where there was, you know, we had. I, I was blessed to have all these older mentors. They, they were in their '70s and '80s, who had been upholstering for many years, who had a lot of tricks, and I, I learned a lot from them, and I'm very appreciative of that. I'm going to try to do that. I'm going to try to present it in a good way too, where um, that promotes your learning and hopefully all the information will be good I mean I'm not perfect so if anybody has any comments sure we we'll take we take them in our stride the comments even the negative ones we try to respond to all of them okay so I just tied all those down okay so now I want to show you what I'm going to do with the extra twine. Okay, we're going to go around and around and around and around, like so. You have a lot of twine, you, you have more loops. And the whole idea of this is to try to get a knot at the end here, like this. Okay, now the reason you do this is because you see how this is bare right here? You see the action that's happening here? See the wear? We're trying to bring this knot, we're trying to bring this down and not this. We're going, to, we're going to take a staple in a minute and go like this to, so it holds. It just protects it. So an upholsterer, a good upholsterer looks at a piece of furniture and says, how long can I make this last? And that's what we're doing. The, the difference here is we could have just left it like this. But this could add 25 years to the life of a seat. I'm going to be long gone and, you know, somebody will be sitting on this from Jupiter or something probably. All right, so it's going to go around and around, around, or it'll be on Jupiter. <laughs> so now we're going to staple this forward like this to pull it down a little bit so that knot doesn't ride up. I'm going to do that all the way around. This one is going to go like so. Staples are good for a backup here. And we are going to eight-way tie this, but we're going to finish the um, we're going to finish it with the staples. And the reason we do that is to save the wood. Okay, I, I don't want to be attacking. Usually, eight the eight-way tie the tacks have to be put on the edges. And so, what I don't want is to ruin the the frame because the frame was in good shape. With how old it is? So we're making that decision now. So this is really shaping up nice. You see you see the crowning already taking effect here. Looks beautiful. So, but we're now we really do need eight-way tie on each spring. We have a four-way tie, which are our main ties, which we've used 14-ounce tacks. Really a good solid construction. So now, though, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna switch to the pneumatic staple gun. For all you who don't have a pneumatic staple gun, you can go down to one tack, just one tack when you when you're dressing this up. So what I'm gonna do first is um, I'm gonna try to get um, a twine this way. So what you do is you get the angles, you try to get the angles. Actually, we're gonna do a, a small one. We're gonna do the front one right here. So we're gonna tie to the top rung on these back up there, back up twines. Uh, do the little crossover if you like. Crossover. So we're gonna do the end ones first. 
if you want to give yourself a little bit more twine, maybe maybe a 20 inch piece. I gave myself about a 15 inch piece. It's a little tight, but I'll manage. So you see how I, I put one staple in, put another one here and then cross over and get it stapled down. That makes it strong. I'll show you that in a minute. I'll, show you, I'll slow that down, but let me just get this. So this one is six way tied. One, two, three, four, five, six. Same thing on this one. You want to go to the top. The other thing we're doing here, which is very important, is we're filling in the gaps of the seat. See this gap here? That's important to fill that in with twines. That's your first building block, is are the twines, okay? So stretch this a little bit. Needs a little stretching. If you're gonna do tacks, you'll have a tack up halfway in and just wrap it around and then set the tack. Okay, now I'm gonna show you, we're gonna set one of these we're gonna do one this way. Okay, so we're filling in the pie, really. So by the time we're done, we're gonna come this way. Well, let's do that one now to show you the eight-way tie in the front one, okay? So when we measure for the twine, you wanna do twice the width now, instead of two and a half. One and two, that should be more than enough, okay? I'm gonna cut that. Then I wanna show you what I'm doing with the twine when I start, just to slow that down a little bit. So this one's gonna get right here and then it's just gonna grab these two, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to come to the back, gonna staple, staple, and then fold it, fold it this way and staple again. So three staples. And I'm using the half inch staples. Okay, so now the rule of thumb too is if you're crossing over a twine, tie it without going out of the way. You don't want to go out of your way to do a tie, but if you're going to be crossing it, you might as well grab hold. And then we're going to grab on the last twine, the last tying, we're gonna knot the middle, okay? So we're gonna go like so. Now when you get to a spot like this, you see how if you tie this, this could slip. So I would go down here just because you don't want it to slip off. And then now, now let's tie this all, get, get a slip knot here to tighten the middle of the spring up a little bit, right? And I'm gonna give this a little tug. Uh, I don't want to be there. I want to be down here. Okay. So that one's done. So now let's fill in. Let's just go along and fill in the rest of this. Now I'm gonna show you a little speed up trick for all you guys. Let's cut this one about two yards long. Watch what I do here. And about two two yards long. We're gonna start. We need it. We need to tie this way. So I'm gonna start here. And, and grab both of those because you can't get in. You could you couldn't get in between here anyhow. Okay. And come under. Grab hold of this one. Now I'll tell you something about spring tying. Every upholster that I've ever met had their own style of tying springs. And you know, I probably hear from somebody saying, oh, you should have looped there when you didn't loop. And, you know, it's okay. What we're trying to do, if you can all remember, you can come up with your own signature spring tying, it's fine. But what you have to remember what you're doing is you're trying to get these independent of one another straight up in the position they should be in, okay? With eight ties, that's it. If you could come up with a better way, by all means. But what I don't want you to do, what you shouldn't do, is use is use a nylon twine. Don't be tempted to go with the cheaper twine on this because it's no good. It, they'll slip. These not. Now I was going to show you. Um, so so now I'm going to come this way. Look, I'm going to take continue with this twine this way, and and grab hold here. So this one's one, two, three, four, five, six. We're going to finish this one in the middle. Tie this off. Don't be daunted by the misshape of the seat and the and the placement of the springs. Uh, which with this part, you're just filling in. You're filling in the angle. You're filling in the pie, as they say. They used to tell me when I was learning. Okay, so we're just gonna pull this one. We're almost there, guys. So bear with me. 
Okay, so we got, let's just see where we're at now. Sometimes even I have to look. So there could be some people who are wondering, wow, why doesn't he just put a piece of foam in there? Well, the reason is, this is a great traditional method of uh, comfort for a seat. It happens to be, in my opinion, and a lot of other people, the most comfortable seat that you can sit on. Um, foam, no, come on, foam, it's foam. Um, springs, eight-way hand-tied coil spring. What is that? See, does that sound good compared to uh, polyurethane? And, um, you know, it definitely is a better way, I think. And it's an antique. Why would I want to change an antique? Why would I want to put... Um, I do use some post-World War II materials for antiques when needed, when required. And we, you can learn more about that when we, when we get going or in my other videos. But... I try to keep the, you know, the bulk, the majority of the piece as original as I can, which is why we saved the inside back. So remember, you remember when we took these springs out, it had all the old twine wrapped around it. Well, that's what we're trying to, we're trying to, you know, duplicate that. The long twine here, I'm going to come this way. By the way, too, when you when you learn how to do eight-way tie coil spring, you're learning a lot more than just that. You're, you're learning some traditions of upholstery, and you're learning um, it will make working with polyurethane easier, or more, you'll have more knowledge about stretching and and and, and the like. Um, this one's really close. Don't like to make them this close, but. Let's see if we can get that tack on there. As long as you get the fold, you're good. Okay, so let's see. We got this one, this one, this one. We need one here. Finish this back spring with the eight way tie. Grab hold of this. So there we are, we go, our beautiful 1860 Victorian chair, beautifully done with the ruby twine all the way from Italy, eight-way tie, hand-tied springs. Thank you, and we'll see you next time. Next, next part will be about stuffing the seat.